So today we're talking about what to do if um, your client is sedentary. So in today's age, um, most women when they fall pregnant will be um, advised to start exercising and you know with any luck they've come to see you for that service and it's your job to provide that service in a safe way so where to start when they're pregnant essentially you start with pelvic floor exercise and walking walking at least 15 minutes a day um that's like in and of itself the most amazing health activity you can do ultimately you want to build to about um 30 minutes five times a week 150 minutes of exercise um, is the minimum or of walking is the minimum for good health and then in addition to that you want to start with pelvic floor exercise um, and pelvic floor exercise for me also includes mobility and posture training um, balance and coordination through the pelvis as well as your classic lift drop and timing of the pelvic floor so you do actually need to go and do a course in um, some kind of deep core training I've popped a link in our comments so that you know where to start with pelvic floor training because as her pregnancy progresses the weight on that deep core both out through her abdominal wall and down through her pelvic floor is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger so um, we also do want to incorporate some strength training at some point, but uh, we want to walk that line. So first you would get her walking, get the activity regular, do the pelvic floor, have a lot of mobility. And then you might only start strength training in that second trimester with conservative, moderate weights. Um, your ultimate goal, knowing she's going to have a baby at the end of it, is her being comfortable with um, the weight of a baby, which is on average is 3.5 kilos. In some countries, it's a bit heavier. Um, you know, that 12 to 15 rep range in those baby positions with good posture and good movement and good alignment and good pelvic floor control is ideal. So light to moderate exercise is better during her pregnancy than no activity at all. Getting her up and walking is the bare minimum. Posture, pelvic floor, mobility, balance and weights. Is a bonus um, we have an example so I had a question sent to me last week um, this trainer has a, a new client she's eight weeks pregnant um, she hasn't been training and she lives a sedentary lifestyle so where do we start with her right away 15 minutes a day of walking and then if she's seeing you in the gym um, once a week or twice a week that's when you would do your mobility training we can assume she has computer posture or couch posture um, the issue with computer or couch posture is actually really nicely demonstrated by my jumper so this is the upright posture as soon as those ribs collapse down into upper cross syndrome do you see how it folds in here and it billows out here and the pelvic floor also has to work harder to hold that up right so upper and lower cross syndrome uh, big deals and will develop through pregnancy um, and a general recommendation is to regress training but when your client is sedentary you have no option except to progress them and if it's their first pregnancy then we don't have any clues about what's going to arise and, and things do arise differently in every pregnancy anyway so you need to be constantly screening verbally um, you know how are you feeling how are your energy levels have you got any pain any tightness any pulling any bulging in your vaginal region you need to be talking about the symptoms of prolapse and stress incontinence back pain all the things foot pain hip pain knee pain all the things um, and every session lots of questions so if your sessions half an hour it might look a bit like this 15 minutes walking followed by five to ten minutes of pelvic floor followed by five to ten minutes of mobility training or the other way around mobility pelvic floor walking doesn't matter now this particular client is also vitamin D deficient and it's out of scope for us to prescribe supplements 
but it's not out of scope for us to guide towards healthy behaviors. So you can research what foods have vitamin D in them and guide them towards whole food choices that can boost their vitamin D. And where does vitamin D come from? The bloody sun, 80%, I think, I think 80%, could be 90% of our vitamin D intake is from sunlight. So that 15 minutes of walking, if it can be done outside, even better. Um, you can also refer, refer to a naturopath for supplementation, but not on in, inside on a treadmill is what I'm saying for her um, uh, walking. Now, we also know that anywhere between 30 and 60% of pregnancies end in miscarriage in that first 12 weeks, okay? Um, that's including, um, you know, the, the period that's, four days late and it's a little heavier than usual, okay? So not to be alarmist. Um, now, if we choose to do strength training in that first trimester, we do have to be very conservative, not because strength training causes miscarriage, because it does not, but because if she miscarries while doing strength training or even afterwards and blames you, that is not ideal. And that also creates uh, fear for her and it may prevent her coming back into the gym. So if the activities you're doing are very conservative, they're walking, they're pelvic floor training, they're stretching their movement, um, then she's not, it's not even gonna register that that's a, that's a big deal, right? In addition, if you are working very closely with her obstetrician, her midwife, um, and you are under their direction and guidance and you're not actually making these decisions all on your own, um, that is a huge boost to that client's confidence and it means in the event of a miscarriage, um, you're less likely to be involved in that thought process in any way. So that's just a little thing to think about. You can see how integrated training a pregnant woman is in other health practices, and that is um, really good for your business as well. Don't be frightened of doing that um, because these health practitioners will gain confidence in you and your methods and vice versa, and it's actually a very, healthy and friendly business ecosystem that can help you build your business as opposed to losing your clients because you're referring out all the time. So any questions, as always, feel free to message me. Next week, we're gonna talk about the opposite end of the spectrum where we have uh, those clients that fall pregnant when they're training often, hard, heavy, and high volumes. I'll talk to you then.